It's a pleasure to welcome all of you here uh, for this event that is commemorating the 35th uh, anniversary of the Taiwan Relations Act. Um, even at a time when there's a renewed focus on Russia and its neighbors and sustained attention on the Middle East, there remains in policymaking circles in Washington today, uh, I believe, an underlying realization that America's destiny is intrinsically uh, bound up in the future of Asia. Since the TRA's passage, the U.S.-Taiwan relationship has weathered shifts in the security environment in the Western Pacific, but it remains a cornerstone of America's engagement and policy in Asia. As China continues to rise in light of changes in the strategic environment, and as the United States continues its balance, uh, to balance its engagement in Asia with other global priorities, now is an opportune time to step back for a bit and examine uh, what all of this means for the U.S.-Taiwan relationship. We, we need to know uh, how we in Taiwan perceive the, uh, the, the, the security threats facing us. But because of the time limit, I will uh, simply say that uh, in terms of uh, uh, we, we are now facing, of course, threats, uh, unconventional threats like the, uh, because of the climate change, all these uh, natural disasters we are facing. And uh, also we have uh, problems uh, with Japan over the, the islands of uh, Diao Yutai. But that, uh, again, being uh, uh, after uh, reasonably, uh, after the dialogue and through uh, the negotiation, negotiation, we now have uh, reached uh, some sort of agreement on fishery uh, so that uh, no more, uh, you know, uh, collisions, uh, I mean, in intrusion of our fishing vessels or their fishing vessels still happen, but uh, now there's a, there's a procedure that we can solve these disputes. And with the Philippines, I think we're still negotiating uh, on, on the uh, peaceful settlement of this uh, uh, fishing boat uh, incident. But uh, to us, the, the biggest uh, threat still coming from the other side of the Taiwan Strait, the men in, of, of China. About 35 years ago with the Taiwan Relations Act and the concern um, inside uh, Taiwan, I think very few people would have seen just how prosperous, uh, how strong a democracy we have in Taiwan today, and indeed how strong and capable a deterrent force Taiwan still is able to field um, with strong U.S. support that you mentioned by Senior Director of the National Security Council, Evan Medeiros with his recent statement about the commitment of the U.S. to the Taiwan Relations Act and the Six Assurances. So these are all very healthy signs, and yet questions remain, just as they did then. <clears throat> Obviously, it goes without saying that the most important uh, international strategic development of the past 35 years uh, in the region and, and perhaps the world is the rise and the modernization of the PRC. Uh, you don't need me to lay out the importance of uh, economics or uh, security implications. Uh, but the point is that when President Nixon and Dr. Kissinger uh, opened to China in the early 1970s, and then normalization took place at the end of the 1970s, it reflected uh, what even then was a growing realization uh, of the coming importance of the mainland to the region and to the world. Now, it's true that Nixon and Kissinger uh, may have had a somewhat narrower focus uh, for their immediate needs vis-a-vis -vis the USSR, uh, the Vietnam War, and so forth. And indeed, at that time, the PRC was fractured, weak, challenged by a strategic threat along its border. But the potential of a country of China's size and centrality and the fact that the PRC was not going away was something that American experts had talked about for some time. And despite the political complexity, including the longstanding relationship with the Republic of China, there was no question about the need for the US to break out of the stalemate we were in. It was clear then, and it certainly is clear now, that many challenges would be posed by the rise of China. Uh, it's a tremendously important, I think it's one of the most consequential acts of Congress during the Cold War. And it's very important to think about its continued relevance. Um, just taking a look, if you could, at this, the list of senators who um, approved of the Taiwan Relations Act in 1979. Uh, my current institution, National Bureau of Asian Research, was founded in the memory of uh, Senator Henry M. Jackson, Scoop Jackson, uh, from the state of Washington, who uh, was one of the senators who voted in favor of the Taiwan Relations Act, as did our current Vice President, uh, Joe Biden. Um, it's interesting, I bet, um, I imagine it's difficult to find an act of the Senate that um, that President Carter signed and Barry Goldwater approved of. Uh, the Taiwan Relations Act 
was one of them. Um, finally, I think that uh, looking at their uh, respective histories in the Senate, um, Jesse Helms and Ted Kennedy voted opposite each other on almost everything. Uh, but this is one of the few things um, that they both agreed on in, in approving the Taiwan Relations Act. And that level of bipartisan support has continued um, to this day. The U.S. has stated time and time again that it, remain, it remains a policy priority despite the budget uh, constraints. And in the latest QDR 2014, um, they stated that the main centerpiece of the rebalance remains the five alliances, you know, U.S. relationship with Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, Thailand, and Australia, but also to deepen defense relationships with other key countries in the region, uh, such as Singapore, Malaysia, and Vietnam. And these defense cooperations runs the whole gamut from the operational to the strategic in areas such as maritime security, disaster relief, missile defense, cybersecurity, and space resilience. Um, in turn, the region is responding to, to uh, you know, these two trends, the increasing aggression, aggressive behavior of the Chinese, and also a U.S. rebalance um, in the region. Uh, and what they are doing is to broaden their own uh, defense options. Thank you, audience, everybody here, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and listen to uh, the vice minister and to listen to this very stimulating, insightful discussion on U.S.-Taiwan relations. Now, please thank the panel. <laughs>